Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And happy Monday. Hope you had a blessed weekend. Hey, uh, when we read the Bible, uh, we often, at least I often, want more details, right? I mean, it's a very condensed passage and you read it and you go, yeah, but, but I, want, I want more. I want more stuff. Uh, that's today's passage in Matthew 27, uh, just verses 11 through 14. It says, now Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, you have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Um, if you want a longer version of that dialogue between Pontius Pilate and Jesus, you can find it in John chapter 18, uh, where there's a lot more details. But this is what we have in Matthew. Uh, and, uh, and honestly, uh, John 18 informs us a lot more. But Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus confirmed that he was indeed the king of the Jews. Now, we know he was the king of the, the, the spiritual kingdom of heaven, not just the physical province of Judea. Uh, and, and then the Pharisees and the uh, chief priests had all these false charges to bring against Jesus, and he didn't say a word, didn't answer a, a, a question. And, and by the way, this is what the prophet Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 53. Uh, and I just want to read this to you because it is so beautiful, but it's all about the crucifixion of Jesus. Listen to this. Uh, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and by his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one of us to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. That's a, a depiction of the crucifixion and the things that Jesus went through, you know, hundreds of years before Jesus was on the scene. That's Isaiah 53. Jesus did not open his mouth. Wow. You know, often, um, I don't know about you, but we're quick to defend ourselves. Somebody attacks us, slanders us, makes false accusations against us. We immediately proclaim ourselves innocent, and yet um, we're followers of Jesus, and he gave us a different example. Uh, so using Jesus' example and the testimony of Scripture, uh, I just want you to hear this. James chapter 1, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for the anger of man does not accomplish the righteousness that God desires. Proverbs 17, even a fool is thought wise if he remains silent. Proverbs 10, where words are many, sin is not absent, but whoever restrains his tongue is prudent. Proverbs 27, let another praise you, and not your own mouth. And how about Chad's corollary? Let another defend you and not your own mouth. So uh, can I just encourage you to be like Jesus? Let's live our lives with such integrity that slander and false accusations don't stick to us and we don't have to go out there and, and get all upset because people are saying things that aren't true about us. We can go ahead and let others defend us and ultimately, we can let God be the one who justifies us and defends us. So chew on that. Think about that. And uh, I hope you have a blessed day.